Since 2003, a group of scientists and engineers at Georgia Tech have been involved with a project that's funded by the National Institutes of Health where we are tasked with discovering new drugs and preserving natural resources based on environments that have the potential to deliver us new drugs but have been understudied in the past and may be in need of protection from environmental degradation. One of the big natural enemies in a marine environment are waterborne microbes. So seawater is full of infectious and pathogenic microorganisms. And these can cause infections in the organisms that live their whole lives in these coral reef environments. So trying to think like a seaweed or like a marine sponge led us to imagine that they might be producing chemicals in their tissues or on their tissues that could ward off disease. We noticed this one particular seaweed, which is called Caliphicus serratus, that was rare in a global sense. We found an island um, in Fiji where it was very abundant. And not only was it abundant, but it appeared to not be fouled by microorganisms. Its surfaces were fairly clean and fresh and didn't look like it had been the target of these microorganisms. A number of students and I and a collaborator, Mark Hay, were able to collect it with scuba and also even by snorkeling when it was found in especially shallow waters. We broached a collaboration with a chemist at Georgia Tech named Facundo Fernandez. And uh, Professor Fernandez's lab specializes in designing new instrumentation to tackle interesting chemical problems. And what we wanted to do was chemically image the surface of the seaweed to see what molecules were on top of the seaweed. This provided a charged stream of droplets that lifted the molecules off of the surface of the seaweed, sucked those molecules into the mass spectrometer, and read out as peaks the molecular size, the molecular weight of those molecules. And from comparing the peaks from authentic standards of bromophycolide molecules, we could show that in fact on the surface of the seaweeds there were uh, patches, areas of the seaweed where we could see intense signals representative of the bromophycolide molecules. What this means from the seaweed's point of view is that it is deploying its antifungal protection in discrete bits. There's patches on the surface where there are high concentrations of these chemicals. And in those areas, the fungi cannot colonize, they cannot infect. We think that what the seaweed is doing is that it's deploying the high concentrations of the antifungal defenses at vulnerable areas because of cracks in the surface or lysed cells or broken, torn parts. It's a little bit like putting a Band-Aid on a wound. Uh, in this case, it's a Band-Aid that contains its own medicine. Once we determined that the seaweed was using these potent chemicals for its own defense against microbes, we thought, well, maybe humans could also learn from these lessons and study the molecular structure of these compounds and see whether or not they might be useful as pharmaceutical agents. What we know so far is that these bromophycolide molecules are a promising lead group of substances to treat malaria as a disease in humans. When we look at a coral reef and we see thousands of different species of plants and animals, all of them are interacting with each other and many of those interactions are based on chemical cues, not just sight and sound like we communicate so often. Those chemical cues form a language that as scientists we have the opportunity to study. We have the opportunity to learn how that language affects the natural structure of ecosystems and we have the opportunity to take some of these lessons and apply them to better the lives of each other.